Alright, so listen, there's been a pretty big problem within the competitive Pokemon community lately, and I'm finally going to speak out against it, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the criminal underusage of our boy Wug Trio. I swear, nobody wants to touch this thing with a 10-foot pole, but I am here to take one for the team and show that Wug Trio deserves some love. This thing can be an absolute unit. Kinda. Hey, listen, if you haven't subscribed already, consider hitting that button. It's free. Only half of the people who watch my videos are subscribed, and I do really appreciate it. I'm on my way to 300k, and I've got lots more videos planned just like this one. Anyway, looking at the matchup here, uh, my opponent is working with a pretty interesting team. Uh, they've got some big threats like the Armor Rouge. There's just a lot, a lot of stuff that can go wrong here, as, you know, my team is kind of full of some random-ass Pokemon I just kind of really wanted to try. So, uh, let's see if we can get these bad boys to work, shall we? So I decided to go ahead and lead off with my boy Mabostiff, Sad Boy Hours, starting early tonight as he actually ends up leading off with the Grafii. I actually just want to lead with this thing because with a choice band I could potentially jaw lock something in and have just like an interesting matchup and kind of be able to take care of something. Plus this boy hits extremely hard and this dog should not be underrated, this thing is an absolute beast. But this is not the best matchup for our little painter boy. I'm actually expecting him to switch into the Don Fan, um, knowing that this thing is going to hit pretty hard. I decided to go for the Ice Fang expecting Don Fan to Come in. Luckily, it does, and Choice Banded Ice Fang is going to do a nice little chunk of damage to that boy. Dawn Fan is also uh, a pretty annoying Pokemon to get through, um, so just getting some chip there is super nice. So we're able to break this thing sturdy. And one good thing about playing against a Dawn Fan is that this boy is pretty damn predictable. I know that the Stealth Rock is likely coming here, uh, so that allows me actually a nice little free switch into the Wug Trio. I'm thinking. Dawn Fan, you ain't looking so hot. You look like you could go ahead and pop three Benadryl here. I did, in fact, misspell Benadryl, but the, the point is still there. Uh, the Stealth Rock does come, which is great. And now everybody's favorite three pills are actually in a pretty solid position here to apply some pressure. So, I'm thinking I should be able to take an attack from this thing, hopefully. is not the bulkiest little fellas, but um, I can hit this thing pretty hard with a Liquidation in return. So... Um, I am actually a Choice Scarf variant. This thing is mainly here to outspeed opposing Choice Scarfers. I hit, I hit him with all three noodles. He's actually able to live and then fire off a nice little knockoff in return. Gets rid of my Choice Scarf, which actually isn't the end of the world. Because, like I said, this thing is mainly just here to be able to outspeed uh, other fast Pokemon with Scarfs. Uh, but it's looking like I should be okay against their team. So, you'll notice that he did actually activate the GUI ability. It's important to note that it doesn't do anything for this match except for that Don Fan now feels gross. So... Uh, he's nice and gooey, decides to get the hell out of there, and he is going to swap into the New Age Smeargle. So the benefit of this Wug Trio is, nobody knows what the hell this thing's going to do, and he probably didn't expect too much damage there. It does do just over half, uh, so I know another Liquidation can take care of it, but I also have the Stomping Tantrum just in case. Uh, I don't actually want to reveal that, because I want to save that in the back, keep that nice and hidden in case I find myself in a matchup against the Jolteon. And as you're going to see, our dreams fucking come true here as in comes Pointy Boy, and Wugtrio has an interesting situation here. So here's my thought process. I have multiple different options to switch into a Jolteon on this team. However, Wugtrio is in an interesting position here to where I can go ahead and burn my Terra, turn into a ground type, and then hit his ass with a stomping tantrum. It's a foolproof plan, and Wugtrio is about to take some names. However, he actually ends up switching out the Jolteon. Uh, unfortunately, I was really kind of concerned about using my Terra this early because I have a couple different things on this team uh, that would like to do so. But... He expects the switch likely into the digital ass Don Fan and then brings in the Hariyama. So I go ahead and put on a nice little stupid helmet on, on one of my Wug Trio. I think it's funny. I was really I had no idea what was gonna happen. I was like, do they all three get hats? Unfortunately, just just the main dude does. The tallest guy gets the helmet. And now we just go ahead and throw a tantrum on the incoming sumo wrestler. So this did not work out exactly how I had planned. This Wug Trio is basically designed to soak up an electric attack, attack with that ground type Terra and basically just pay homage to all the Doug Trio who came before him. This basically turns into a fake ass Kanto Doug Trio. But uh, of course, now I do have to switch. I'd like to keep that fella in the back pocket. I can switch into potentially uh, Thunderbolt to that thing later. And I figure I'm just going to bring in my big fat yellow boy. The, this has got to be one of my new favorite Gen 9 Pokemon. Just because look at this fella. He comes in, takes the fake out. actually does uh, a shit ton of damage. But I'm actually max HP, max special attack. This thing's basically here to just kind of... Uh, soak up attacks, hit pretty hard with his electric moves, potentially get some, some Volt Switch pivots. But now we find ourselves in a situation where he has the Don Fan in the back who generally just kind of counters this thing. So I'm actually going to expect the Don Fan to come in. I go for the Chilling Water and this thing is not ha does not have a whole lot of health left. So I'm expecting a kill here. Does in fact bring in the old Wheelie Lad and the Chilling Water is actually going to take care of it. So a couple predictions into the switch on the Don Fan has worked out. Now I don't have to worry about the big old defensive fella. And uh, our dude Bello is making shit happen over here. Look, he's all—he looks very squishy. I just want to 
I just want to hug him. Anyway, uh, so now he gets a free switch, and that is not good for everybody's uh, favorite electric fat friend, as in comes the Armourous. This is likely one of the scarier Pokemon that I have to deal with, and that's also kind of why I wanted to keep the Wug Trio in the back pocket, because this thing is uh, an absolute monster. So, here I decide to switch back into Grimace. The main reason for this is just kind of death fodder. Uh, if I could catch him going for a psychic move on the switch in, that would be ideal. Um, but I'm actually just expecting the armor cannon to come in. And, you know, Mibostiff does not look super great in the rest of this matchup. So, I figure if there's anybody that has to come in to sacrifice himself to get a free switch, it's going to have to be my dude. So, does go for the armor cannon there, and that takes care of me easily. Uh, but what this also does allow now is some more fucking Benadryl action. We're going to bring back in the Wug Trio. And as a ground type, I could go right for the Stomping Tantrum. But I saw the defense drops, and I figure I'm just going to go right for... Uh, the liquidation, just because if he decides to switch in the Star Raptor on this, that would be a bad time for my dudes here. So, ain't nobody need no Choice Scarf, as Wugtrio being a Pokemon anchored into a rock, you would not think it would be very fast. But this boy is fast as shit, I go for the liquidation, easily takes care of that thing, especially with the defense drop, and we are looking solid, as that's of course one of the scarier Pokemon. Now he gets a free switch, goes directly into the Star Raptor. I'm thinking, okay... I have more base speed this, than this thing, and I also don't really have much that wants to switch into this. So I have to stay in. I go for the liquidation. Turns out my dude was actually Choice Scarfed. And that is a situation where, yeah, I wish I still had my Scarf on this fella. Um, because then I would be able to outspeed opposing Scarfers like I was supposed to do. So not having the Scarf, you know, you know, kind of messed me up there. But at least what that does do now is it tells me exactly what this type of Star Raptor is. And I know how to deal with it later. So... Wug Trio goes down like an absolute beast. Not gonna lie, first battle with the Wug Trio. Dude's out here taking names. We gotta get some respects in the chat for my guy. Uh, so he goes, he kills me with a U turn, which is great, because now he, get, he goes into his Jolteon. I'm able to see that matchup and then bring in something accordingly. And I figure Robo Reptar is kind of the guy for the job here. I got, it's actually a Terra Bug variant. I got this strategy from uh, Pampa Hefe. It has the loaded dice item with a whole bunch of moves that can just hit a whole bunch of times. Uh, so he actually ends up going for the Volt Switch there. Does not like the matchup, of course, and he brings back in the Hariyama. So what's good here is the Hariyama actually is at enough health to where two of these should be able to knock it out. I go for the Rock Blast just for safety. Um, of course, with the loaded dice item, that is going to allow this thing to hit at least four times, which is great. Uh, because no matter what, this thing is going down next turn. It can hit, can hit me with a fake out, uh, but no matter what, this thing has not the easiest switch in here. So, if you're also still watching at this point in the video, you have now found yourself into the secret question of the day. What is your favorite Paradox Pokemon? Mine has to be the Robo Tyranitar. This thing is sick as hell, and there's actually a lot of different things you can do with this boy. So, uh, it does take care of the Hariyama there as that thing goes down to two. I uh, actually got hit with a shit ton of rocks, but that guy's had... He's, he's definitely seen better days. Um, so now he gets a free switch, does bring in the Star After. So now, knowing that this thing is Choice Scarf, I can actually take advantage of this matchup quite a bit. So I know he has to lock himself into close combat if he wants to take care of Tyranitar. Uh, so that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. He does go for the close combat there, takes care of me, but uh, knowing that this thing has to click that or switch out next turn, I can kind of uh, use that to my advantage. Um, also, shout out to Star Raptor, still making it happen here in Gen 9. You love to see, love to see our, our emo boy thriving. So, I've got the perfect little fishy who wants to switch into a Pokemon that is locked into a fighting move, and that is the boy Veluza. Excited to use this Pokemon. I think that this thing has a lot of fun potential for it, and he actually is able to kind of be my best answer to come into a close combat here. So, uh, he is forced to click that again. Of course, being part psychic type, I take nothing from that shit. Uh, this thing is built to go for the fillet away, but at this point, I just go ahead and uh, slice his ass with a nice little aqua cutter. This thing's ability actually boosts slicing moves, which is kind of cool, and so I'm able to take advantage of that, takes care of the Star Raptor, and now the last Pokemon is going to be the Jolteon. So, Jolteon, of course, is going to be able to outspeed because for whatever reason, they made fucking Veluza fast as hell in the overworld in the actual game, uh, but he is slow as shit in reality. So... Uh, I do die there, but what I do have is a robotic-ass Don fan in the back of the team who is basically designed to uh, kind of take care of this thing. So Tesla, been hanging out in the back for this entire time, comes in, stretches his weird little robo legs, and this thing is actually Assault Vest. So I'm actually, I'm fairly certain I can take pretty much any attack this thing wants to throw at me like three times over, uh, but I decide to go for the knockoff here. The reason for that is because my dude has not used his Terra at this point in the match, and if he goes Terra flying on an Earthquake, I'm going to look like an idiot, so I'm going to go ahead and not let that happen and just hit him with a knockoff. So, actually turns out to be Terra Ice type on the Jolteon, which is definitely interesting. Both of the Jolteons I've seen has been, have been running the Terra Ice. I assume just because now with the Terra Blast, you're actually able to get uh, a nice little ice move, which is great coverage for Jolteon and uh, being able to hit, you know, ground types of that shit. So, 
Uh, it does do a whole bunch of damage with that life orb. I'm able to hit him with a knockoff. Does not actually quite take care of this thing, but it does get rid of that life orb, uh, which should allow me to take one more hit without that uh, little boost of extra damage. This thing hits extremely hard, uh, especially because I'm Assault Vest. I think I'm actually max HP and attack, so... Pretty impressive showing from our little ice hat wearing friend. However, I do live the next one, hit him with an iron head, and that does take care of the Jolteon. So that's going to be the end of the match. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support on these videos, and I'm having a whole lot of fun doing it. So uh, I will see you guys next time.